Hi, in this presentation, let us take a look about dynamic modifications at runtime in WebDiver. Generally, for displaying a table, we will first create a context with all the elements needed for display, and then we will create a view and then bind the context with a view. But WebDiver also allows us to define the context, that is the data storage and the user interface dynamically at runtime. Hence, in this presentation, we will look how to display the flight details in a table based on the CAR ID dynamically. As we all know, the controller initialization method is a window do in it. Also, we have to start coding in window do in it. The root node is an anchored point for all other nodes, irrespective of whether they are created statically at design time or dynamically at runtime. Hence, in order to create a new independent context node, a reference to the root node has to be obtained. This reference is obtained by calling the method get node info of WD context. After getting the context root node, reference to the context root node, we have to add a new node with the attribute care ID. Hence, I am creating a new node called flight by calling the method add new child node with the obtained reference. The most important parameter is is static where above underscore false has to be maintained so that the node can be deleted at runtime. Now we have to add the attribute called care ID to this created node flight. Hence we have to call the method add attribute of the reference root node and add attach the attribute care ID to that created node. Next we need to create a node for creating a table. Similarly using the method add new child add the node and using add attribute add the attributes under the table for display. Here I have displayed 5 fields called care id, con id, fl date, price and currency. To display the value of dynamically created context attributes or to keep the UI generic the UI element hierarchy can be manipulated at runtime. Hence the coding should be done in the hook method window do modify view because since only in this method there is a reference to the UI element hierarchy provided at runtime. Also this method is just called before the view layout is rendered and also it is called every time the view controller is processed. Here in this window do modify view there is a parameter called first time that can be used to assure that the source code is processed only once in the view controller's lifetime. As we all know, after creating the context in the layout, we have a root UI element container where all the properties are attached. In order to get a reference to the root UI element container, we are calling the method get root element of view and we get a reference for the root UI element container. Then we need to pass the root UI element container properties to a container. The next thing we have to do is we have to create a layout. As we all know there are four layouts, flow layout, grid layout, matrix layout and row layout. In this presentation I am dealing with row layout. To create a new layout we need to call the method new row layout of class CLWD row layout inside the container then we have to set a space between label and input field to set the space we can call the method set with next thing we have to do is we have to create a new input field and we have to create a label for that input field hence to create a new input field we are calling the method new input field of class clwd input field and normally the bind value will be the car id from the context root node available here the context root node is flight in which i have one parameter called car id hence i am initial we need to create a new car id field so i bind the value with the node flight dot the field is car id then i need to create a label for that car id so new label of class clwd label is called the next thing is in row layout we have two things one is new row head data and new row data new row head data will be the first element in the row and new row data will be the 
consecutive elements. Hence, the first thing should be label and next the input field. So, the label is called as a row head data with the method new row head data of class CLWD row head data. Next, the input field has to be maintained as row data. So, to do that, we are calling the method new row data of class CLWD row head data. Next, we need to attach this label and the input field to the container. So, we are calling the method add child and attaching this label and the input field. Next thing is we need to create a button. As per this scenario, we have a car ID and after entering the car ID and pressing the display button, the flight details has to be displayed. To create the button, we are creating, we are calling the method new button of CLWD button where we need to maintain a name for that button and a text for that button and an action for that button. Next, we need to set whether this as a new row head data or row data. Next, we need to add this button to the root UI element container. Next, we need to add table to the layout. To call the table, we need to first add the table using the method new table of CLWD table. And to make it non-editable, we call this method read only equal to x. And to have a visible row count as 10, we are giving the number as 10 here. Then we need to add, tell the container whether this is new row head data or new row data. Then now we have created a table and now we need to add columns to that table. So to create columns, first we have to call the new input field and bind the value with each and every field. Hence the node created for the table values is table and the field first field should be car id hence i call table dot car id now we need to maintain the new table column so the new table column of class clwd table column is called and the column is maintained then using add column we have to add this car id as a first column then we have to provide a caption for that car id with the method new caption then to make the cells visible to the user we call the method set table cell editor. Then we need to at last we need to set the header for that car ID. Similarly for connection number, for price, currency, date etc. we need to follow the same. And at last after creating a table we need to add that table to the root UI element container. Hence we have called the method add child of the root UI element container. Next, inside the action, on pressing the display, the flight details should be displayed. Hence, first we need to get what is the value the user has entered. Hence, we need to call the method get child node of WD context node to get the attribute which the user has entered in care ID. Next, with reference to that created node, we need to call the method get attribute to get the value of care ID. Then we need to select the details from the table based on the entered car ID. Then we need to get the reference to the table and bind the table with the created internal table values. Now let us test this. value AA, the flight details corresponding to AA will be displayed, where the connection number is 17 and 64. Hence, like this, we will be able to create dynamically at runtime in WebDime Thank you.